Donald Trump, of course, was not only laying the groundwork to saying, I know you are, but what am I? China's the real intervener. He also, and this was a report that came out a couple weeks ago. I covered it on this show. Uh, Serious exploration of backing a coup in Venezuela. Let's be really clear here. You can't sugarcoat what's happening in Venezuela. There's massive corruption. There's serious humanitarian problems. Uh, there's a, actually such a large military presence in the government that I don't know how in some ways we square this with it being a left government at this point. Although, obviously, the Bolivarian Revolution and Chavez have definitely achieved some excellent things. And I think it's also a very legitimate and very serious question to ask, what would replace it? Uh, a U.S.-backed coup is not going to deal with corruption issues. It's not going to deal with the relationship between the Venezuelan military and the cocaine trade. As I say, if anything, the cocaine trade that it's a part of might just flip from an alliance with people on the sort of the FARC remnants to right-wing paramilitaries and cartels in Colombia, which is going to happen to some extent anyways because the FARC has been demilitarizing. So... Any of the issues that these people are using, some of which are right and we can't spin, that are real legitimate problems of Maduro and Venezuela, are first of all, part and parcel of a military that you would use to advance a coup, because that's actually the seat of where things like these cartel connections come from. And number two, if you have a different social base of a military coup, whatever tiny remnants of social progress that were achieved by the Bolivarian governments that are still holding on, will be promptly destroyed. And number three, we should oppose U.S.-backed military coups, period, full stop. Here's the idiot at the United Nations talking and musing about just such a thing in Venezuela. Every option is still on the table. Even All the options are on the table. Mr. Every Mr. One. Mr. The strong Mr. ones and the less than strong ones. Every option, and you know what I mean by strong. Every option is on the table with respect to Venezuela. Secretary We're going to take care of the people of Venezuela. We have many Venezuelans living in the United States. Many of them live in the Doral area of Miami. I've gotten to know them very well. These are great, great people. We're going to take care of those people. Just a pure replication of the right-wing Cuban dynamic there, which is another thing to look at. Uh, I think his name was Posada, but a Cuban terrorist who worked with the CIA from the Bay of Pigs through 2002 when he was arrested in Panama as part of a plot, another plot to attempt to assassinate Fidel Castro, uh, spent some of his time in Venezuela. How many of those were there total, by the way? I mean, I think at least dozens as have, yeah. like, I think like we know of dozens that have been declassified, like declassified dozens of attempts to assassinate Fidel Dosing Castro. Dosing his uh, radio studio with uh, 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 air LSD, uh, aerosol LSD, I believe was one of them. Should we do an illicit history on that? That might be fun. Just actually, like a yeah. pure chronicle of like bizarre plots to assassinate Castro. There was also the exploding cigar one was real. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and for those curious how Trump might know a bunch of people from an exurb outside Miami to be Venezuelan, uh, he has a golf course there. Great course. Doral. Doral. Great course. Great, great course. A lot of good Venezuelans around it. <laughs> it's funny how he was talking about defending the Venezuelan people and immediately just uh, pivoted to them being people in Florida. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm These Venezuelans this. in Florida. <laughs> Look, who's not an electoral skeptic? This guy. <laughs> you can welcome immigrants in highly specific circumstances. <laughs> 